Hello and welcome back to video number six of my Paradox Interactive Historical Playthrough Mega Series, playing as the modern day nation of Turkey or its ancestors. I'm Admiral Jedi and thanks for joining me once again. We're going to pick up exactly where we left off. And just as a reminder, we are playing not as the Sultanate of Rum, but as a small county um, in the Sultanate of Rum. And we have set up a character, Prince Sensor, who is going to be the grandfather of Osman the I, the acknowledged founder of the Ottoman Empire. A reminder uh, that we have played this entire series originally as an origin story of the Seljuk Empire, which we played through uh, in some of the earlier videos, and then we moved into the Anatolian area, formed the Sultan of Rum, and then of course we're most recently invaded by the Mongols. And so we're going to start the beginnings and the origin story of the Ottoman Empire, which is who we're gonna be playing for for a very long time. The goals of this specific video are going to be a sort of rise to existence, rise to fame version of the Ottomans, rise of the Ottomans, uh, where we're gonna tell a bit of their origin story and we're gonna be focused quite a bit on lineage uh, in this one. And so this guy, who is not historically accurately named, Prince Censor, is the father of Eturo, who is, at least by first name, historically named, and is believed to be the father of Osman, who again, as I already said, is the father of the Ottoman Empire. So, a couple of historical inaccuracies to get out of the way. It is widely believed that Osman was not a member of House Seljuk. There uh, are some variances on that where the, the Ottomans sort of claimed ancestry going all the way back to Ogos Khan, the very, very first person that we played as in video number one. Uh, and if you watched the previous video, you may recall that I basically said, you know what, I'm not going to start a whole new character for this because um, I'm excited to keep my good breeding and all my dynasty properties and all that sort of thing. So I'm cheating a little bit there uh, just so I can have a decent playthrough. But it is believed that Eturo was given his lands by the uh, Seljuk Sultan of Rum. So that actually has happened in my game so far. Or rather, I gave it to his father, Sensor. And so he'll just go ahead and inherit that. But that's a little bit of a historic fudge uh, that we're going to just roll forward with. It is instead widely believed that the uh, that the that Osman and his uh, family, uh, Eturu, were basically nomadic migrants that uh, were migrating away from the sort of Mongol invasion, similar to way that the uh, the origin of the Seljuks migrated in and that they migrated and found land in this area here. So the land that they were given was called Sogut, and uh, this is as close as I could get to it. So this is a little bit wonky when we're playing in formerly Greek-owned uh, prince principalities where they all have Greek names. And so this is kind of messed with my research a bit because uh, after you... you sit on one of these properties and it takes over your culture, the names switch um, to more, you know, Turkish kind of sound. And right now they, they have other Greek names and all my research is, is bringing up uh, the Turkish names. Now, speaking of research, uh, I do want to share a couple of the source material that I'm working with. I am working and reading through uh, Carolyn Finkel's The History of the Ottoman Empire, Osman's Dream. Got a link up, or, well, not a link, but a Put a, put a little picture up that there for you. That's one book that I'm reading. And the second book that I'm reading is The Ottoman Empire, The Classical Age, 1300 to 1600 by Halil Inalchik. So there's a picture of that one there for you as well. So that's in addition to my standard Googling and wikipedia and just general fumbling around trying to figure out all the history behind this stuff. Now this particular series 
the Crusader Kings portion of it is going to end in 1443 AD. We're at 1236, so we've got another couple hundred years. We did start in 866, so we've already played through 400 years. And it's been pretty fun. Anyway, one of the reasons we're going to do that is because we are going to, in 1444, transition to Europa Universalis IV and play the rise of the Ottomans in that game and uh, continue the series on there. So it's really kind of hard to state goals like I normally do. Um, I've got some intermediate goals for myself, which I will kind of call out here, but really the best way to state it is we're probably going to go for another two videos, including this one, and that we're going to do, our goal for this video will be to have the Ottoman, it's going to be too difficult for them to have a full empire um, sized kingdom, but we are going to look to have to create a cadet branch, first of all, we're branching off of the Seljuks. Again, that's not historically accurate, but I've given my reasons for why I'm going to do that. And we're going to branch them, or branch off a cadet branch as the Ottoman, as House of Ottomans. That will happen after uh, Osman passes, after he dies, basically. We're going to create that cadet branch. And then we're going to do some of the historical conquerings that occur along the way. Uh, including taking over this uh, duchy of what's currently named Obsikion, which has uh, cities in it like Nikea, I believe that's here, yep. And then Thrace was a significant um, uh, conquer that, that they uh, did, as well as, I believe that this area was called Karesi, Karesi, Kare, K-A-R-E-S-I, not named anything like that now. Um, but after looking around all over Google and Wikipedia forever, I'm pretty sure this is it. Uh, and we are going to avoid taking Constantinople um, basically for the whole game because that was not officially taken until I believe around 1492 or something like that. Um, I could be wrong about that, so I'm going to re re revisit that timeline. But again, our goals are really going to be lineage-oriented, that each successor, starting with Osman, the son of Eturo, will have specific goals for that successor. So it's kind of hard to call them all out right now. But we're going to push the growth of the nascent Ottoman Empire as, as far as we can. Uh, but probably not going to have it be a true empire in this video. So, what are our goals for this guy? Well, our goals for Sensor is really to just get this kid to uh, live. So, I just wanted to start with a character that I could name, and we're going to get a turtle to adulthood, uh, and then... Uh, we'll, we'll do a little bit of, we're going to take a little bit of land with, with him. Um, I think we're going to try and take this entire uh, duchy of Obsikion. We may take that <clears throat> instead with Osman, his son. So really, we're just going to sort of play tall until, uh, probably until Osman comes around. So until my grandson comes around. So that should take, you know, 40, 50, 60 years. Uh, starting from now. So uh, let's go ahead and I'm just going to fast forward that uh, unless we come across anything sort of culturally interesting in the meantime. Uh, 1250 AD, just a quick peek at the size of the Mongol Empire at this point. Just for reference, they're even out here in Sicily. So, yeah, or is that Sicily? Oh, I'm, I'm playing too many, too many Paradox games, I can't remember. No, well, yeah, Sicily. Uh, just, what is the, um... What's the boot? Oh, gosh. I, I am in it in Europa Universalis, like, all the time. Somebody shout it out so I can hear it. Naples. Gosh, thank you. I appreciate that. 1251, and, uh, my heir, Eturu, has grown up. I took a bit of a risk here, which I think is gonna pay off. I hope it's gonna pay off. 
Um, so he's looking pretty good. Well, decent, I suppose. Um, anyway, uh, it's... Uh, what the risk that I took is I declared celibacy after only having one son and two daughters to basically try to just pass things down immediately to him. Uh, and it's a good thing that I did because... Okay, never mind. I thought I had it perfectly timed where I was going to die shortly and be able to go, because I died, and uh, I didn't. I lost my death door, and I'm going to live. So, uh, yeah. Never mind, I died. <laughs> All right, well, that's fine, because, again, I was completely prepared for that. Um, and it's nice to be able to play this guy sooner. Th okay, calm down, everybody. One day I will be like you. No, okay, whatever. Um, because I just basically kept... All my titles and all i need to do is get to work uh producing osman the father of the ottoman empire let's do it uh 1257 a.d and the mongol horde has fractured into the ilkhanid and golden horde and that is very historically accurate i don't know about the time frame but in terms of the Golden Horde was up here in the north, as we see, and the Ilkhanid Khanate um, really kind of took, except for the, its occupation of the uh, Byzantine area, which is not accurate. So um, that's kind of cool. Um, I'm, I'm glad that they did that. I'm a little bummed because some random count just declared, or Duke declared war with freaking 40,000 reinforcements he had like five thousand people and he i don't know married like every single one of his sisters off to like every old man in the world and got like forty thousand reinforcements against my my five thousand troops it's like okay but for one county whatever man you can have it <laughs> um so i'm a little bummed about that but uh that turns around by seeing cool historically accurate stuff occur so yay um Still working on Eturo here. Two daughters, <laughs> both married to old men, so I can get uh, uh, what we call it, allies, which didn't really matter. Um, and uh, a couple of pre premature deaths uh, of other children, so no, no son yet. Um, I don't know who this guy is. My cousin. All right. Well, anyway, um, let's hope for a, let's hope for a boy. Alrighty, here it is. I wasn't expecting to have twins, but that's kind of cool. We are going to bring Osman to life. So, Osman, son of Erturu, the historically accurately named... Again, I don't think Osman had a twin sister, but, uh, well, there it is. So, this young boy, if he lives will be considered the father of the Ottoman Empire. It's on. It is now the year 1270 AD, and this is an example of what the map looks like. What we can see conspicuously missing from previous videos, or previous sections, is the Mongol Empire. So it has seemingly collapsed. We still have the remnants of the um, Ilkhanid Khan, Khanate, excuse me, now the Altan Khanate, and they have fallen back significantly out of the Anatolia area, not, not entirely. Notice there is no Byzantine Empire uh, still, and probably never will be. Um, we'll see. I, I, don't, I don't know. Perhaps they'll they'll reform the Byzantine Empire. I don't know if that's a decision that the AI can take or, or not. So for now, we're going to consider this Hellas area to be equivalent to the Byzantine Empire. And what we see along in these times, uh, alongside, so here's, here's, here's me, right, up here in the northwest, is this fractured Anatolian area, which has been fractured into Balix, 
or, or it appears that way. And so we're going to throw a little map up there from Wikipedia up there on the, on the left hand side where you can kind of compare and see again it's, it's not perfect at all but you can kind of see that the same fracturing um, around this time looks kind of the way that it does so I'm, I'm uh, pretty excited about that. Now that also sets the stage for us to go ahead and just kind of pick up the pieces, which is what really happened. So we're we're not going to take much action here uh, until whichever comes first, um, 1301, which is a specific year, or when Osman becomes an adult, which is obviously going to happen uh, sooner than later. So. Rather than, in 1301, what happened was uh, Osman won his very, like his first kind of big military battle. And I'm not going to wait for him to become my player, because you never know, he could just die. And instead, uh, we're going to have that alongside his father, Eturul, when he gets eh, close to being an adult. And uh, we'll fast forward by, it looks like four years, and talk a little bit more uh, about that event and what it meant. So, the time has come. Osman has come of age, and the time for him to make his mark uh, is here. And my daughter, oh yeah, that's right, she, he's a twin. Okay, that would make sense. Um, so, in 1301, Osman led a major victory against a superior foe. So this is a challenge that I'm thinking of trying to give to myself. Uh, we're going to use my army and try to win a challenge against a superior foe. So there's a few ways I could try to go about doing that. This gout-ridden crap is just, I hate it, it's everywhere. Anyway, um, all right, ignoring that, sorry. I could call in allies, which is kind of a cheater's way of doing it, because, for example, I could just simply declare an independence war against my liege and call in my 40,000 allies against his, and, you know, that that would do it. Um, so that... that Maybe what I do if I uh, meet too much frustration and want to uh, move the game forward, that's one way of doing it. Uh, the other way of doing it might be to try and find a single battle that I could win um, with terrain bonuses and you know general bonuses and all that sort of thing, which is the way I'd rather go. And um, Osman's victory in 1301 was against the Byzantines, and it was by way of ambush, and I think they came out to attack him, and he ambushed them and won this significant victory. Now, that victory is what was required by the Sultan of Rum, or the Seljuk Sultan, who was governing the area, and we can see that there's no longer that going on here all that much. That was required uh, of him, and the Sultan named him Bey. Now that's B-E-Y, uh, and it's kind of like Lord, or, you know, it's where he got his title from. Um, officially, Eturul did not have any titles at this time, and it was Osman who got the title. So we're not historically accurate at that point, because uh, Eturul has actually four titles. Uh, but y you can't play somebody in this game without land. So, you know, it kind of doesn't work out to go full historical in that in the uh, circumstance so that's the second option uh and the third option would be to wait until this dude somebody goes to war and then sort of attack them now the reason why i'm focused in this area here i'm very focused on um osman taking this entire area of what's currently called Opsikion. And then his son, um, Orman, will take this area, this county, um, the Duchy of Thrace, not including the city of Constantinople, 
and also this duchy here, and that will be sort of Ormond's op set of opening moves. So I'm really focused on this duchy right here, and the only other person who's... Oh, well, this guy's in there. Okay, so I could take that county, but he's, he's a, a lower military. So I, I'm really focused on doing something with my liege, frankly. And an independence war would really do the job. Um, because that is really kind of what happened. So we'll zoom out a little bit more here and see that... Let's go back. See that the map is a, is a lot even more fragmented than it was before. And that is exactly what was happening at the time. So I think I'm going to lock it in that my military feet will be against my liege. I just need to figure out precisely how I'm going to fight against him as a superior foe and win. That's my challenge. After a great amount of hassle, um, I'm bringing this to an end. I have reloaded this attempt to attack my liege uh, just dozens and dozens of times with insane amounts of frustration leading from anything to a I mean a holy war was declared against this region they conquered the duchy that I live in and then I game overed it like a straight lost the whole game because I only have these lands right now and um, my son Osman has died I don't know six times easy sometimes just from disease uh, and so the RNG plus kind of weird historicalness like there really shouldn't be a big empire here <laughs> right now um i tried to do independence which was my initial proposal and then you just get kind of raffle stomped because i'm still just a little county barely a duchy so um, switching goals here just so I don't drive myself crazy and try to stay as historically accurate as possible that these this area here we're gonna go ahead and, and enforce on this um, is really about as much area as Osman took um, to sort of gain his his Bay Balic title which, if you kind of think about it, I don't know, isn't, isn't that big. <laughs> but, um, so, there are many people who say that it wasn't so much Osman that did it, but his progeny. Uh, and so it's his son, Orhan, who uh, isn't born yet, because uh, all he can make is daughters so far. But whatever, we'll get there. So I think what we're going to do is um, continue on. We're going to call the Osman um, sort of segment's goals, the goals of the Osman segment, done. Um, other than we need to produce a son, Orhan, and, uh, who will do hopefully a lot more, and also then uh, create a cadet branch, but I cannot do that until I'm independent. And I don't know, going independent... I don't think it's going to work. I think what I'm going to need to do is do a dissolution. Um, and not because that historically happened, but rather because the situation on the Anatolian platform was many small um, Baliks, not kind of this big one here. I don't mind if Hellas goes back to behaving like the Byzantine Empire. In fact, I'd like that. But uh, if we have this huge Nikea, uh Sultanate right in the middle, where there should be just a bunch of warring Baliks, that's uh, going to be very difficult uh, to do. And also isn't really super historically accurate. I don't want to have to sweep down and take all this stuff before I make the Northwestern push, which is what we should do. So the more I think about it, the more I think we're going to need to do, just from a logistical perspective, a dissolution. Um, take this guy down, break him up, and then um, go from there. I'm going to try that and see how it goes. 1720, or no, 1279 AD. 
Something that I've been longing for for a long, long time. Primogeniture. Where your oldest child gets all of your titles. I'm going to go ahead and set this just because I'm so sick at this point of messing with all this inheritance garbage. This, it's worth noting that historically, inheritance and succession was a massive problem for everybody. Those of us who play this game are like, oh no, the moment you lose a ruler, you know that everything's going to go to hell. That's what happened, is very all the various claimant factions and everything like that. There are some stories in the Ottoman Empire even where all of their sons would be like murdered preemptively um, other tales where they were all kept basically in basically like a harem until uh, finally you know the the leader died and the one eldest would be chosen and then all the rest would be killed to the point where they got mental illness actually um, or knowing that at any moment someone could show up and just basically be like, okay, you're going to die. And and one of the Ottoman sultans, I, I don't know, I remember who it was, I just read the story though, basically was put on the throne with mental illness, and it was like they showed up and he was like crying and screaming and saying, you know, you know, oh, don't kill me, don't kill me. And they're like, no, you're, you're going to be the dude, like you're the king. And it's like, huh? And, and so he, he was crazy. And then he was deposed, and then they put him back on the throne again, and he was still crazy. So, uh, this nightmare is very, very true to history, but, uh, we're gonna go ahead and, I don't even know, has Narnia the oldest memory? No. Ultimogeniture? The young? No. We're gonna go with primogeniture. Thank you very much. Passed. Alright, so, now, only one son. I can have as many sons as I want at this point. Yay! So, yay, one fewer thing that we need to worry about. So a new phase, and probably the final phase for this video, has opened up with the manhood of Orhan. Orhan was Osman's son. Uh, Osman in this game died of uh, internal injuries or something like that. But anyway, uh, while Osman really took some uh, property or some some land in um, northwestern uh, Anatolia like I have here it's his son Orhan who took a lot more we're gonna be looking to take um, basically this duchy this county all of Thrace except for uh, Constantinople and then also it really did look like significant areas of Anatolia were also well I don't think they were conquered so much as they threw in their lot with the uh, rising Ottoman powers I'm really struggling um, in this game right now Nikea is absolutely immense um, there's no way I can currently take over this guy. He's just grown and grown, and I've thrown every murder plot and everything I've, I have at him. And with his 13,000 gold, uh, and, and adding insult to injury now, the despotate of Hellas, uh, the you know Byzantine stand-in, has basically decided to attack him uh, for my land. And he's like, I'm out of here, <laughs> naturally. And I'm standing here like, uh, what am I going to do? Well, I'm certainly going to just basically watch him beat me up. Um, because I can do nothing about it. I, I don't think I can call allies to my lieges war. Uh, no. So I'm just going to have to follow him around while they ravage my lands. And uh, help him out, all while I'm secretly trying to take his lands from him. So, this is not going anywhere near where I hoped it would go. Uh, and so, and also, it's worth noting, Osman is dead at this point. Etudoro is still alive. 
uh, and Osman shouldn't have taken these lands until 1301. Okay, but uh, that's that's long gone. So I'm I'm once again f uh, throwing out the timelines uh, in, in a way, and I've been trying to just you know sustain and build, um, but I let a lot of opportunities for conquering uh, go by me, and we can see that here. Um, where before this was all patchwork, and now it's not. And this guy is just a, a machine. So anyway, we're going to follow him around like a little puppy dog and hope that he breaks. The year is 1317 AD now, and a lot has happened. Um, you heard probably a lot of frustration in my voice uh, for the past few minutes. It, it was real and legit because I've been trying and trying and finally succeeded to pull off a dissolution against Nikea. I believe he's still here. Uh, some Yeah, as Obsikion now. Okay, so this is my former liege, still with his 31,000 troops. Oh, I didn't realize he had so many mercenaries. Okay, well, good. That means those are going to go down soon and he's still gonna be an issue for me do i have a true i did beat him uh do i have a truce against him yes i do okay so for five years i can hold him off and do so here so here's the thing i'm gonna put that um patchwork map of anatolia back up again here it is okay so we now at 1317 are really where we should have been practically at the beginning of this video which is anatolia is separated into multiple beyliks we're going to look at hellas as being essentially the byzantine empire and i can now begin making progress on them as orhan are we playing as i think we are even playing as orhan yes okay um so we're going to do this we're going to conquer the rest of this video and man do i feel like conquering <laughs> the rest of this video and indeed the rest of this all through crusader kings 3 uh, i think which is only going to last one more video after this one are going to be conquering now in reality in, in history there was northwestern movement i think i've already highlighted this they would take here and thrace and then other things going up again i uh, i'll do that based on when i get to the appropriate people at the appropriate time but what i'm going to do that didn't happen is in order to do that crusader kings 3 really does not give you the capability to have dazzling conquests on a battle by battle level there's no way for example that when osman won his battle against byzantine forces it was a battle of like 2,000 versus 1,000 or something like that. And, there, and when he beat those 1,000 Byzantine forces, everyone was like, oh my gosh, you're amazing. We're going to give you a title and an entire empire and all that sort of thing. There's no way that in history um, that the entire Byzantine empire would have emptied all of their troops from every single place throughout the empire to come fight you like they do here. Okay, so it would be really interesting, and maybe they can add this um, in uh, when they add nomads. The concept of like local battles, of being able to basically do battle only against a county's forces, as opposed to again. So, so I'm going through all that to justify the fact that I'm going to do something non-historical, and that is we're going to conquer all of Anatolia so that I can have the might necessary to make the push up into the northwestern area. The only other way I could do it would be to enlist, you know, my allies of 30,000, 50,000, all that sort of thing, which I may also do as well. So this concept of, oh, I'm going to be a little county and take on the Byzantine Empire, which is what historically happened, just doesn't happen. It just doesn't work. I've wasted, you know, 20 minutes and... Pro 20 minutes of video time and probably f almost 50 years of game time trying to make it work and it doesn't so we're gonna cheat we're gonna conquer conquer conquer
And absolutely central to the Ottoman Islamic expansion, uh, and indeed most of its history, was the concept of the Ghazi, which was really like a holy warrior, a holy conqueror. Um, in Islam, there is the concept of Darul Islam versus Darul Harb, where Darul Islam is essentially the Muslim world, and Darul Harb is essentially the, the infidel world, the, the non-Muslim world. It was, and is, the Ghazi's job to wage war in Darul Harb, the infidel world, to basically bring it under the authority of Darul Islam, the Muslim world. So a person who did this was known as a Ghazi, whereas this concept was known as Gaza. Now, not to be confused with Gaza, the city in Israel, but rather the concept of bringing Islam by conquest to the non-believing world. And that is exactly what fueled the Ottoman expansion. And so we are going to conquer as Orhan Ghazi, as the sort of holy warrior who will bring uh, Islam to the non-believing worlds. Now, when that was done, an interesting thing happened, and that was they said, you know what? Go ahead and keep your religions. Go ahead and keep your titles. Go ahead and keep your lands. You're just going to pay taxes to us. And they had a special tax, which we may have um, seen in before, even though I don't have a tax collector, because occasionally they just die and it doesn't tell you, which, please fix that. Um, anyway, they have a special tax called the jizya, where you can change it and say that it's a higher tax on non-Muslims, uh, and that was legit. That's 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 a, a real thing that they that they did. So it's funny because while they said, "Yeah, we want you to convert to Islam," it's like, and if you're not, you're gonna pay us higher taxes, and that became a really a huge source of revenue for them is to say, no, we're not going to kill you. We're not going to, to the point where um, the Ottoman Empire at a certain point even considered itself the guardian of Orthodox Christianity and the guardian of the Byzantine Empire to the point where I think it was Mehmed the Conqueror. Um, I might have these names wrong. We'll, we'll do it more when we get to that time. Basically considered himself to be the Roman Emperor as well. So, onward with the conquerings. While I wasn't looking um, off helping an ally, 1321, someone snuck in and formed the entire kingdom of Georgia right under my nose. Um, I think at this late in the game, trying to keep things small and parceled out is just impossible. Um, anyway, uh, I I've been whining the whole video. I really apologize for that. It's been a difficult run this time. I think downsizing down to like a county level and then trying to play county with big boys has been very difficult. Um, we're going to do something that we've been talking about like the entire series, uh, which is now that we're independent, we are going to create a cadet branch. So, um, well, there you go. I thought it was going to ask me what I wanted to call it. It's like, you are now a member of House Orhan. Well, technically, we don't want to be House Orhan. We want to be House Ottoman. Um, and then I'll come up with some clever motto later on. So we are officially uh, the Ottomans now. So there we go. It switched. Um, yay. So now all I have to do is basically conquer half the planet, and we're, we're, we're good to go. To assist me with all of my conquerings, I'm going to add a new uh, set of men-at-arms that are going to have a special meaning for me and for the Ottomans. Um, unfortunately, I don't think that they're adequately represented. Well, maybe. Okay, I've got good damage in there. And that is the concept of the Janissaries. So we're going to add them as house guards. The Janissaries were an elite unit uh, of the Sultan's sort of personal guard, uh, house guard. So it's appropriate that we uh, do that here. 
Let's go ahead and just boost them up to at least five, and then we'll we'll take it from there. So something um, to know about the Janissaries is that they were pretty much exclusively drawn from slaves, and there was a bit of a uh, brutal process involved there, known as Devshirma, where slaves were sort of harvested, I guess, um, levied, that's probably a better term, uh, and the promising young men would be brought into the house, forcibly converted to Islam, circumcised, and then pressed into military service as slaves, uh, and this the this is where the, the Janus series came from. Dev Shurma was used to basically produce all the slaves for the empire, whether they came into military service or not, but the uh, Janus series went through this process. Later on, the Janus series became uh, such a powerful force. In fact, slaves were a powerful force in the Ottoman Empire. They were given all the best government positions, all the uh, elite, you know, military positions, and eventually took on a, a, a power of their own, as we're going to see in uh, Europa Universalis. But uh, for now, let the Janissaries arise, and I probably won't talk much more about them until we get to EU4. Ooh, baby, I am feeling a lot happier now that I have done some conquering. So all I've really done is get ready to do what I should be, have done already, which is go after Abydos, Thrace, Bailijar, Bailijar, um, and that would fulfill uh, really uh, Orhan's first calling. And uh, I think he did some other conquering besides that. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and take those, if we can, end this video. And then the last video in Crusader Kings 3 is going to basically be a hundred-year spree of conquering. And hopefully forming the Ottoman Empire. So right now, all we are is the Ottoman Kingdom. And uh, we'll try and make some peace with Georgia, I think. Who knows, maybe I'll nab that from them and then steal a ward or something like that. Um, so we can focus on this westward movement. And I'm um, going to begin that invasion here shortly. It's pretty significant. Uh, in fact, why don't we just talk about it right now? So back in the day, you couldn't really just walk past a fortress uh, or even the ginormously, massively walled uh, on a strait with bridges constantly. You couldn't just walk across, okay? I mean, unless you really wanted to die, uh, in which case, you know, most people didn't. I still don't. Anyway, so I think these are called the... This may be the Bosphorus Straits, and this is... Oh, gosh, what was that called? The Dardanelles. Oh, and of course, I'm sitting here holding my mouse over it. Oh, the Dardanelles. Oh, there it is. Um, does it say Bosphorus here? Bosporus? Yep, it does. Okay, so there you go. I didn't even have to Google. Uh, so what happened is once the uh, Ottomans or Orhan took this province here, I believe it was known as Karezi, that this then gave them access to the Dardanelles. And rather than go through Constantinople, they just went around it. And so we are going to do that. We're going to take this, and then we're going to take Thrace, the entire duchy, except for uh, the county of what's currently Byzantium. So let's take a look at that. So we can take Brasis. Well, it's going to be really hard to not take. I guess I can go county by county. But then I'm going to have to wait five years each time. Which is fine. So we're going to just... And, and what is this right now? Who owns this? Are you owned by... Yeah, so the Byzantines own it all. Hmm. Um... Because going county by county, that's what, 5, 10, 15, 
Not that I needed to click to count. I do know what 5 times 3 is. Anyway, uh, that's going to take 15 years. And then... Yeah, well, and then we'll stop. Right, okay. And then we'll do video number 7 as 100 years of carnage. Okay, yep, that's the plan. That's 1, Abydos. That's 2, Phalipolis. And... That's it. Number three. What is that? Crisis? I don't read that. Brissus. Okay. Two of three. So, what we have is we have started the Ottoman Empire. Again, we had to take practically all of Anatolia. That is not historically accurate. Uh, at least not for this time period. This massive, overzealous um, vassal invasion, not historically accurate. I didn't do that. Same with this one over here. What is historically accurate is taking Caresis or Abydos, Calipolis, Bresis, and not taking Byzantium or uh, Constantinople. So you can see a little, little light pink there. A little light pink. Uh, nor is Venice uh, plopping, and Crete uh, deciding to just uh, plop themselves in there. That's a little bit uh, ahistorical. But anyway, that brings us to the end of the era of Orhan. He's looking pretty raggedy anyway. Uh, and also, the end of this video. So, I'd like to thank my one viewer for watching. And we have really gotten underway with the Ottoman Empire. We're going to make one more video in Crusader Kings 3 covering the final 100 year period of uh, extreme growth and expansion, more than has, has already occurred. And then we'll end it and map that up to see what the starting map looks like in Europa Universalis 4 compared to the ending map in Crusader Kings 3. Thanks for coming along on this journey with me, and we'll see you next time.